Hello, everybody. Um, I'm glad to be here and that it's, I could resolve the technical problems we had. Um, um, I'm really glad to be here at my first state of the map, and um, I am really, really appreciated that I have been invited by, for the scholarship to come here and to talk to you about um, the stuff we are doing down in Nicaragua. Um, as you probably can hear easily from my accent, I'm, I'm German originally, but I'm living in Latin America now, just the tropical lifestyle and um, really um, in an extraordinary um, culture of being nice to each other um, lets me, yeah, let me choose this, this place to, to live. Um, I'm a web developer, mainly um, using uh, mainly using Drupal, um, and besides that, I'm a free software activist. I'm involved in the Debian project and um, in Central America and Latin America in general in community building around open source technology and projects. Um, I tried to give you, um, I want to give you like a really brief introduction into the country Nicaragua. I think I wanted to bring it down to three slides. This is not easy. Um, and it's for sure not complete, but I think that it helps you to have like a little bit of an idea about what what the circumstances are where we are working. So um, Nicaragua is the um, is the country of um, lakes and lagoon and lagoons and um, volcanoes. Um, it has amazed, amazing um, nature and jungle and um, wildlife. It's really amazing. Um, but it, what it makes it really special are the people. And um, besides that, like the positive things, there's like really this um, big, big issue about poverty, um, which in a lot of things really like um, has an impact on what we are doing in within like open source, um, as well as technology, because people don't necessarily have access to devices, etc. Um, just to give you like the two data that are more like most impressive maybe to 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 um, calculate or to understand the poverty official unemployment rate of Nicaragua at seventy percent, and um, the basic salary of the most of the other people that have a job is one hundred and twenty dollars a month. Um, Besides that, um, Nicaragua always has been like a country where um, um, pretty vulnerable for disasters. So we had earthquakes and hurricanes, which is going to be important for the next thing I'm going to talk about. Um, and uh, this is about the the, the addresses we are, or the address system we are using in Central America. Um, um, it's a reference point-based point address system, which is not completely solved in OpenStreetMap. I would like to explain. Um, these are like usual addresses we are using, like from the church to um, 400 meters to the east. So um, it's like always like based on a reference point and where you go. Um, but there are reference points that are not as clear. For example, in Managua, we have this little tree, which is a, um, which is a, which were several trees actually. That um, the first one was eaten up by termites. The second one was hit in an accident by a pickup truck, and they always get um, um, put there again and again. Um, you probably wouldn't map a, a tree usually in OpenStreetMap, but this one, this tree is really important um, for our addresses in Managua, at least.
recently with giving um, talks on thank you um, on giving talks on um, free software um, um, events and in local universities and um, because I was uh, OpenStreetMap really looked to us like a great project to get people into it. There are a lot of people who would like to play with technologies. They they they, they like it, but like going into programming is more difficult than like building up a map and playing with it. So so really we really thought that it was a good good idea to 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 show it to people to know about open software and 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 open data. Um, what happened is people got excited and um, we have now regular meetups, we make mapping parties since December last year, um, we um, involve the students from the universities, we have connections now to local institutions like the Ministry of Tourism which, which is really really interested in the data because even though the government has some data on some, some mapping stuff, they don't share it between their own institutions necessarily. So. Um, that's great. We have like somehow momentum right now, and um, we think it would be good to um, to take advantage of that. Um, um, so we had, as you can see, we have like a mailing list which is working, and we are organizing uh, ourselves on the wiki because we think that openness, transparency, and integration uh, enables integration, and this is what we want. Um, but. There's like this loose group of people and they don't know what to do and we didn't know what to do. So we said, hey, we need, we need somehow a goal where to go and, um, and motivate the mappers and, um, and get actually an example out there. So um, imagine that you're in a city where um, there's no map on public transportation at all. And, um, and um, people usually, if you ask, they n would know maybe two or three bus routes, but they don't know everything. So it's really like something that it's, um, it could be a good example for open data because we can just do it and we don't have to wait how many years more the government will provide us this, um, this map. So um, this is the only map that exists. A newspaper um, put it up a couple of years ago. Um, if you print it out or if you want to understand really where the bus routes go, forget it. It's like these colors and not interactive at all. Um, it's not really usable, this map. It helps us a little bit to verify what we are mapping, but that's all. Um, these are our buses. You probably know them. <laughs> we recycle them. Um, then... Um, the funny thing were when we were mapping this this nice bus driver were telling me the first day he started um, they gave him the bus and I told him go for it and he didn't know where to go so he had like to turn around and ask all the time the the, the passengers where he should drive and um, so he was really really happy that we were like with the GPS devices on the buses and telling him that we are going to do the maps so there's like real need for this data and um, yeah. So um, we started with mapping parties, and we are doing now mapping parties every month on Sunday um, and getting people together um, to map for a direct beneficial use they have, to get like this data together. And um, we really think that like if there's an, since there's no map, we have great opportunities to get it out if it's printed, if it's a website, a mobile mobile app. I mean, everything is going to be really, really usable. Um, it's cool because we are getting like people together, learning about um, um, learning about technologies and. Um, People are actually uh, as well using technology to share, which like in a Latin American culture is something that is really in there, but it's usually not um, done when, it's, when it comes to technological issues. So that's, um, that's cool. Um, actually, we have um, direct implement implications for the quality of life when we have this data because um, a lot of people usually don't go out in, a, in the evening, so you just go to work, you go home, because you don't know how to get to another place, or how to get after work to another place and then home. It's like you would have at least to ask and everything like that, so that, that makes like people tend to stay at home in a, in, a, in a city where, hey, that's 
where you don't see as many friends, so this is directly um, connected to quality of life. Um, as well, um, it's connected to security, because if you don't really have a map and you cannot really like tell the police where you got marked or whatever, so um, all this data really can, can help. Actually, the, 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 the US government is doing some mapping with crime data in Honduras to compare the stuff, so this was like another use case we could have. Um, um, further, it would enable visitors and residents to get around more easily. Um, it's really hard to ask if you don't know Spanish, so um, it would be really good to have like this map for as well for international visitors, but as well for the people there, because really not everybody knows the bus routes. And we would encourage people of the use of of transportation. Um, a lot of people use taxi because it's just more convenient and it's more secure and it's um and so they do that but it's they r probably cannot afford it that much so they travel less um we are an informal uh, citizen initiative and um actually we have like um this educational comp component that we want that people learn the whole workflow we have like uh, people from in every areas we not only have people from um from like from the technical background, we have people from, um, of course, from the free software community, um, where we invited a lot of people, but as well from other disciplines, um, mappers, but as well so, um, yeah, social social careers, everything. Um, We are doing it in um, in um, a co-working space we have in, in Managua, which is perfect for that because we can use it and it's nice. We have internet and um, people feel comfortable. And um, we uh, we are we we are actually in contact with the with the um, local um, regulatory institute of the of the city administration, and they are really interested in our data because most of our data is um, or most of the data that we are collecting is not official officially regulated, and they want to regulate it, and um, they cannot map it because if they go onto the bus they probably would tell them other information that they give us because they would think, hey, I will answer what the city wants to hear and not what's probably real. Okay, this is the state of um, the Nicaraguan bus map. And um, we pretty much advanced a lot on the, on the, on the, on the general bus lines. Um, and we are all documenting it on, in, the, in the wiki. Um, the funny part of it is that, or the, the big challenge we are facing right now is the, um, are the bus stops, because bus stops um, are not as easy to map, I will tell you. Um, just you can see actually here that we have most of the routes, but we don't have the bus stops. Um, so we have three different types of bus stops. We have the official ones that were regulated. There's like the bus stop, the booth and everything. And then we have other ones that are just like usual. People know that there's a bus stop and they would wait there and they want to go off the bus there. But no official part institution has defined that and they don't know about them. And we have like these flexible stopping areas, which is like outside of the city where you can just stop the bus wherever you want. Um, this is really hard to map. There's actually uh, um, uh, um, a night challenge, a few night foundation challenge um, proposal, which um, is interested in, in uh, interesting in, in in this context, and um, which is about to extend the GTFS specification to um, to informal um, transit data, which is exactly what what's our difficulties with the bus stops, and. Um, as we are dreaming here already, there's um, a really cool app to um, to map um, transport um, uh, data, um, which is missing like a, a small parts, but then we could use it, and then we hope we, we are soon there. Okay, um, this is the mapping part, but people, I, I saw like when we started ma mapping that the people really wanted to have something more um, like, like a product of, out of it, something that they can use afterwards. Like actually they, a lot of people expected them to have that one day after mapping, which is like 
of course not real, but um, yeah. So so we are thinking that we we would like to do get like real products out of it, and then we realize that this is a lot of work. So we can need your support. Um, we can need your support as experience. If you have done something before or you know somebody who did, um, we are really green on that. So please um, contact us and, 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 and give us information. Or if you're interested, I, think, I always think that in conversations as well, you get into new things. Um, and the other way of um, helping us would be sponsoring. We had, have received, we don't need a lot of money. That's like really something we, we, we need, yeah, relatively less money. Um, and um, we, but there's some things where we could use money. One is the mapping parties. We have like, we, it's, it's usual to give food to people if they are there the whole day and um, bus, um, the, the bus fares and the materials. Um, as I told you, the country is not as rich, so if people are doing something on a voluntary base, it's, um, it's like you get e even fewer people if they have to pay their expenses. It's just, it's just new, uh, natural. So this is something that Mapbox has actually sponsored the first two uh, mapping parties, and this was like really, it helped us a lot to kick this all off. And um, the other thing is like the products. We would like to do the, the website, we would like to do some printing and like getting it started. Once we get the attention, I'm really sure we will have this in the country. We, we, will, we probably will be able to sustain the, 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 the project with sponsors and everything. That shouldn't be a problem. The problem is in, um, that people probably and companies there wouldn't believe that this is possible. Uh, they want to see that it's there before. And so um, if you have a company or some spare money, um, please talk to me, it would be nice. Um, one really good um, news is that we are going to have our first bike lane, one bike lane in Managua. And um, I promise OpenStreetMap is going to be the first slippy map that has this bike lane on it. <laughs> so yes, thank you. And <laughs> and I think the the official time is over, but since the others are a little bit late, I think we can take some questions if you have. I mean, we, we just map it with, uh, with the geographical position. Right. Yeah, the bus stop could be, could be a, a reference point, but it doesn't necessarily have to, has to be one. I really think that OpenStreetMap in Nicaragua could um, could change a lot of things, for, um, and, and and it could like um, and it's as it is a small country, um, it's possible to convince people easier than in a bigger country. Um, but um, this is like my personal um, dream about the, 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 the public transportation mapping. I want this out as an example so that then decision makers can like see that, uh, see that and see that this is working and they can really benefit from it. There are like a lot of opportunities because there, there are no good maps in Nicaragua at all. So like um, OpenStreetMap is not perfect in Nicaragua but other, m other maps, maps are probably worse. Yes? Um, the question was how safe it is to ride the buses in Managua if there's a lot of crime. Um, first, Nicaragua is the securest country in Central America. Um, and Managua is probably the only um, city where there's some more crime happening. And yes, it is happening on buses, but I think it's still um, it's not as much the problem is here that there's perception and there's um, what is really happening and um, and there's no real uh, comparison about um, about the about the crime data and the perception of the people. 
Um, I might think that another app, which maybe could uh, some, somebody could do um, um, on this data, could actually vis visualize this this issue and give a better answer. Okay, thank you.